But if we are not making spiritual advancement, we cannot say, well, that's what Krishna wants, I guess. <laughs> it's like saying, you know, if, if the garden gets overgrown with weeds and, and uh, looks horrible, uh, what kind of excuse would that be? Well, that's what God wants. What can I do? <laughs> oh, there's something you can do. You can do your duty. <laughs> if you do your duty, then everything will be nice in the garden. <laughs> But if you're lazy, everything will go to hell. Hmm. So, yes, uh, this uh, recipe for uh, purification of the heart, for controlling the mind, for becoming Krishna conscious, everything is there, everything is provided. Takže ten recept, jak uklidnit mysl, očistit srdce, stát se vědomím Krishna, existuje, je tady, všechno máme. But it is up to us to engage uh, this opportunity, to engage in it and, and work for the result. Mm -hmm. And what is the result? Krishna says, you just do four things, manmana, You come to the stage where your mind is always thinking of me. Bhava mad bhakto. And you be my devotee. Bhava mad bhakto znamená, staň se mimo daným. So, the word bhava, it, uh, it means nature, it means existence or being. Bhava, to slovo znamená, It means that your nature should be of that of a devotee. Znamená to, že bys měl mít stát se odaným, být jako svoj bytosti odaný. It doesn't mean part time. Neznamená to jenom částečně. You see, when we speak of something's nature, that means that's the way it always is. Když mluvíme o tom, že něco má určitou povahu, tak to znamená, že to tak je vždycky. Like uh, fire's nature is to be very hot, to burn things, and to give light. Now, if someone showed us something that was very cold and uh, didn't burn anything and gave off darkness and said, this is a fire, <laughs> we would have a hard time believing that. <laughs> <laughs> Because this is not the nature of fire. So when Krishna says Bhava Mad Bhaktaha, he really means be my devotee at all times, under all places, uh, under all circumstances, at all places. And Mad Yaji, worship me. Huh? And Namas, be very humble, offer your obeisances to be. And be very humble also to Krishna's other servants. When Krishna says, if you do this, Mama Vaishasi, Satyam te. I say in truth, you will come to me. Hmm. Because one who is like this is becomes priya, becomes dear to Krishna. So this is this is really the point. This is this is this is the essence of bhakti yoga. Nah, I'm sure everyone here has heard of different yoga systems. Huh? So what is special about bhakti yoga? 
This is the yoga by which one becomes dear to Krishna. You don't become dear to Krishna by karma yoga, by jnana yoga, or by mystic yoga, uh, only by bhakti yoga. Uh -huh. And if we become dear to Krishna, then, uh, as he tells Arjuna in the famous uh, 1866 Gita verse, Masucha, don't worry, don't worry about anything. You know, even after we become devotees, there's so many things we could worry about. Hmm? We still find ourselves to be very imperfect. We're always seeing ourselves uh, that uh, I'm committing offenses, I'm, I'm ignorant. And so many shortcomings we find. Hmm? So then we can worry. How will I ever be successful? Hmm? How will I ever become a real devotee, a pure devotee? But Krishna says, Masuchaha, you don't worry about that. Just make sure you're surrendered to me. You see, it's like a servant, you know. Uh, a servant may be not very intelligent. Hmm, you may have so many personal shortcomings, defects. But if he's a loyal servant, mm -hmm, uh, if the master can trust this servant, then that servant is very dear to the master. It's hard to find people to trust in this world. <laughs> you see? So this is the thing. When Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Parichyaja, Mame Kam Sharanam, just give up everything else, surrender to me. If we can just do that much. Show the Lord that loyalty. Then he'll tell us, Masucha, you don't worry. I will protect you. Hmm? From whatever defects may still remain. Mm -hmm. So this should be great news to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we can see in this uh, our actual shelter. I told you how everyone is looking for shelter. But people who are in Maya, they look for shelter in this temporary material world. <laughs> and they're just cheated. Mm -hmm. But Krishna came 5,000 years ago and spoke Bhagavad Gita. And performed his transcendental pastimes that are recorded in Srimad Bhagavatam. He did all this not to cheat us. Hmm? But to give us, even now, 5,000 years later, to give us his shelter. In the form of his holy name, in the form of his instructions, and in the form of his pastimes. This is the subject matter of spiritual sound vibration. Mm -hmm. So if we just eagerly let this vibration through the ears into our heart. Then Krishna consciousness will develop. Mm -hmm. uh, real knowledge will come. Mm -hmm. The 
mind will become pacified, best friend. Hmm? It can be either worst enemy or best friend. Mm -hmm. So this is the formula. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada, he said that in essence the whole purpose of the Krishna consciousness movement is just an arrangement for hearing. We should hear every day. But we should also have uh, programs for uh, uh, introducing others to this spiritual sound. In this way we become servants of Krishna in his sound form. Hmm, that sound form is, is himself. Hmm, there's no difference. So all of his transcendental potencies are invested in this vibration. So what can be, what could be simpler? Krishna is here and now. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to see him, first you have to start to hear him. Mm -hmm. So if you hear him nicely, then you'll get the eyes to see him. Mm -hmm. That's what Prabhupada always said. Don't, don't try to see him first. <laughs> of course, in the deity form, you can see him. But also Krishna is everywhere. He's in our own heart. And there we don't see him. But you can, if first you hear him. And so there's a, there's a science, there is a, a technique to this hearing process that must be followed. Just like again, for growing a garden, there are books tell you how to do it nicely. So in the same way, we need to cultivate the hearing and chanting and remembering of Krishna in a bona fide manner. And then the success that is possible in this human form of life will become yours. So I thank you very much. And uh, would there be any questions? Is it that uh, Maya increases her, uh, like, um, yeah, it, it, it's like more pressing on devotee when he starts to serve Krishna, or it's just uh, due to the devotees some, something? Well, um, Maya is Krishna's devotee. Maya Krishna for Dani. She is pure devotee of Krishna. And Prabhupada said that her service to Krishna is to make sure no rascal bothers the Lord. And rascals try to do that. Uh, just as we see when the Lord 5,000 years ago was displaying his lila, so demons sent by Kamsa were coming again and again in disguise to try to enter Krishna's pastimes and create disturbance. So Krishna was very kind to them. He killed them personally. You see, but uh, as we know, uh, God, Krishna, he doesn't have to do this. It's not really his purpose to come into this world to kill demons. Mm -hmm. When he does that, that's just his mercy. He gives these demons liberation. But Maya is here to kill all those demons. <laughs> of course, then they don't get liberation. <laughs> 
So, Maya is much more severe with the demons than Krishna is. <laughs> she puts them in hell. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, uh, this is her service, to make sure no rascal bothers Krishna. Hmm. So, I've told you in the beginning of the lecture, what is our state? What, you know, what sort of culture, or better say, non-culture, <laughs> we are coming out of? It's an Asura culture. Hmm? That is what we are in the beginning. So then some of us, uh, fortunately, come to Krishna consciousness. So you have to expect that Maya will test you. Because she doesn't want some rascal to bother Krishna. Mm -hmm. So that's one way of understanding this. Another way to understand this is that there is so much dirt in the heart. And uh, this dirt has just been lying there and, you know, more layers of dirt coming on, coming on, coming on, covering, covering, covering the heart. And as long as we're in Maya, in illusion, then we can say that the dirt is just there. Uh, and we don't really notice it. Uh -huh. It's there, but our, as I said, our vision is outward. We're looking at this bright material world and, Im and imagining how everything is all right. You see, this is the way people are. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not profound. They don't try to look in the heart. But when you come to Krishna consciousness, then you have to look in your heart. You have to deal with that dirt. Mm -hmm. What does Mahaprabhu say? Chetul Darpana Marjanam. This chanting, this process of chanting is cleaning the mirror of the mind, which means to clean the heart. So there's all these layers of layers and layers of dirt. And now we start to clean it. So what happens? You see? It's like if you find some uh, closet, you know, that no one has gone into for a long time. And it's all filled with dust. And there's so many old things in there. And they're also covered with dust. And now you have to clean it up. So what will happen? You see, yeah, you start to clean, but so much dust will <laughs> naturally fly up, you know, into your eyes and nose and, you know, hard to breathe. <laughs> And it might even look like it's getting worse. Because <laughs> before you open the closet door, everything was just laying there, peacefully. <laughs> so we were like that, in, you know, just laying in the material energy. <laughs> like rocks in the garden. <laughs> but it's not our constitutional position to be a rock in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> we have to act. We have to, you see, purify ourselves. Jeev Jago, Jeev, get up, Lord Chaitanya is calling. Get up, get out of mind. Mm -hmm. So if we've been lying in the dirt for so many countless lifetimes. Then when we get up, there will be so much dust flying around. Mm -hmm. But don't become, uh, don't become disturbed by that. 
That's part of the cleaning process. You see? If you go into that closet again and, you know, you start to clean a little bit and dust comes up and you think, oh, I'm just making it worse and you leave, then nothing will change. So we have to be tolerant. That's a very important quality of a devotee. Actually, if you want to know one clear quality, even you know, even at the neophyte stage, if there's one clear quality that separates devotee from non-devotee, it's tolerance. A jedna jasná vlastnost dokonce i na tom počátečním stádiu, která odlišuje od daného od neoddaného, je právě tahle tolerance. Mm -hmm. I mean, he may be a neophyte devotee new, but if he's serious, uh, then he is able to tolerate so much um, uh, yeah, trouble for Krishna's sake. Including the trouble of his own anartas, which get all disturbed when he starts to practice Krishna consciousness. Non-devotees, they can't do that. And it's, they can't do it because they're non-devotees. They have no reference uh, for, ha for you know, for practicing tolerance. Their reference is only themselves. But it's not even it's not even the real self. It's what Bhakti Vinod Thakur called uh, the uh, Mano Manush in one of his songs. Uh, which means the man of the mind, literally, Mano Manush. In other words, when people talk about themselves in the material world, in material life, they're not talking about the soul. They're talking about something their mind has imagined. You see? You ask this person, what is your name? And he says, my name is Dushan Dubček. <laughs> this is imagination. <laughs> that's not the name of the soul. <laughs> but that's who he thinks he is. And, atta and associated with this uh, Dushan Dubček name, with so many <laughs> other things, you know, I live here, my parents are these two persons. These are my friends, this is my town, blah, 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 blah. This is all imagination. <laughs> so Bhakti Thakur says, Mano Manush. The man that exists in the mind. So you see, their reference, their reference is just mental speculation. And if that's your if that's your foundation, how how you practice any tolerance? Because the mind is astiram, it is unsteady, it is chanchala, always changing. Yeah, so people, you know, you know how people are. They may get serious about something for a while. But sooner or later it has to change. You see, a, a materialistic person cannot just go on and on performing austerities voluntarily. Material nature may force him. You see, so he's born in a very poor family. And he's all skinny. Not because he's a yogi, <laughs> but because he has no food to eat. <laughs> so that's another thing. Uh, but voluntarily, no one can perform austerities for long. Because there has to be some purpose, some, you know, some reference, that's what I mean. Some, there has to be some other measure why I'm performing these austerities. 
musí být nějaký důvod nebo nějaké měřítko, nějaký, jako, proč to dělám, nějaký význam to musí mít. And if that other measure is just imagination, a jestliže tím měřítkem, tím základem je jenom představa, it's not going to work. tak to nebude fungovat. You see, by imagination, someone may say, "All right, <coughs> I'm not going to smoke anymore." Oh, okay, so there are people who do give up smoking. But study them closely, and you'll see all they do is just substitute that addiction for another one. Because the mind must be attached to sense gratification. So they may stop smoking, but then they're always chewing gum. <laughs> Or something else. <laughs> but the mind has to gratify. You see? And if, if our whole concept of what we are is just the mind, then we will be under the mind's control. So this is why non-devotees, they cannot possibly voluntarily perform the austerities that even a new devotee does. Mm -hmm. So this is my point, tolerance. So this is one thing we have to tolerate Uh, either, as I said in the beginning, Maya's test, that's one way of looking at it, that Maya tests us, you have to tolerate that and go on with your service. Or the other way of looking at it is because we've begun the process of cleaning the heart, so therefore so much dust is flying up everywhere. I have to tolerate that too. Mm -hmm. Anything else? This process is like a long-term thing. We should be patient, but Shla Prabhupada says that we can surrender also immediately. So uh, those who surrender immediately are those persons, uh, they were practicing in the past lives already, and it's just a result of their practicing, or it's someone who was completely covered, but he also surrendered immediately. So what's, what kind of person can uh, surrender immediately? Mm. Yes. So, generally, I, I, you see, unless one has transcendental knowledge, one cannot surrender completely to Krishna. Because you need transcendental knowledge to know what is Krishna. If you, don't, if you don't have that, then you'll just try to surrender to some imagination Krishna. And this is what goes on. I mentioned Hinduism. So that, that's a religion of 700 million people. But out of those 700 million people, how many do you think are actually Krishna conscious? <laughs> Very few. Not that they haven't heard about Krishna. Not that they even don't worship Krishna. But they're, they have a, a mundane idea of Krishna. The truth is, yeah, and this is the fact, that in India, uh, Krishna is understood to be an ordinary man of history. Who is, you know, 
Indians, because they know about things like mystic power, there are still yogis in India, so they just think he was a, you know, big mystical person. But ultimately, he was an ordinary man. And what that means is, uh, you know, you or me could become Krishna. <laughs> this is how they think. And this is just imagination. You see, so uh, they may, uh, you know, observe Janmastami and this and that, but this is not r genuine Krishna Bhakti. Mm -hmm. They are not actually surrendered to Krishna. Uh, so, this is my point. To surrender to Krishna, one must have transcendental knowledge. So, in Gita, Krishna says, Bahunam Janmanamante, Gyanavamam Prapadjite, Vasudeva. Yeah, Vasudeva Savamiti Samahatma Sadurlava. So, uh, transcendental knowledge uh, is gained over many, many births. Then at last, the last one becomes Gyanavan and knows that Vasudeva Krishna is everywhere, everything. And such a soul is, such a great soul is very rare. But there is another way to attain transcendental knowledge. And that is to have complete faith in the source of transcendental knowledge. Shastra Sadhu Guru. Mm -hmm. So, if we surrender to uh, Shastra Sadhu Guru, mm -hmm. then even though we ourselves are not established in transcendental knowledge, we are also uh, not resisting transcendental knowledge, resisting means to put up a mm -hmm. and actually we're serving that transcendental knowledge and we're always receiving transcendental knowledge you see so yes our our range of of realization of that knowledge may be not so great but if we uh, strictly uh, stick to what we have realized. Whatever we have understood, if we are surrendered to that, if we are serving under the inspiration of that, then you have achieved transcendental knowledge. Because it's transcendental, therefore, one drop is as good as the whole ocean. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada used to praise the daughter of my godbrother Shamsundar and god sister Malati Devi Dasi. Her name, little girl's name was Saraswati. Because she, as a little girl of just a few years old, uh, she used to preach. She would go in, in the airport when uh, uh, the devotees would be with Prabhupada if he was leaving. Then uh, little Saraswati would go to strangers in the airport and ask them, do you know who is Krishna? Mm -hmm. 
And they would say no. And she would say, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <laughs> and you know, this was about all she knew. <laughs> But she had complete faith in it. And she acted on it by preaching. So Srila Prabhupada very much appreciated that. Mm -hmm. So, one has to at least become like that. So, so transcendental knowledge is there right now. <coughs> we may not have realized much of it, but we can still surrender to it. And we go on serving it, go on receiving it, by hearing, by reading, by asking questions. Uh, in this way, the lingering darkness of the heart is constantly being removed. And our fund of knowledge is always growing, growing, growing. So if you do this, then you too have surrendered to Krishna. Any other questions? The reason behind it is the plan of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That there are some special demons who are extremely powerful, extremely determined. These are the world famous de uh, demons. Like Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha, Ravana. So these demons go to the top demigods. Because by themselves they are more powerful than the ordinary demigods. So they go to the top demigods, Brahma and Shiva. And they perform, they perform severe austerities. And uh, Brahma, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, they have to, they have to do something. So what they do is, uh, they recognize that this demon's strength and determination is actually there by the plan of the Lord. I mean, ordinary living entities are not like this. <laughs> so they recognize that the Lord has some purpose for this demon being in the world. So they think, then let me give such a benediction to this demon Uh, whereby he will uh, meet the Lord face to face. Hmm? So, this, th you see, this is the result of the benedictions that were given to Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha, Ravana, and other, you know, top demons of world history. That they met the Lord face to face and fought with Him. And the Lord killed them and liberated them. Hmm? So this was Krishna's plan all along. And Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva because they are Uh, so close to Krishna. Yeah. Lord Brahma, he is Krishna's representative for the whole universe as Guru. And Lord Shiva too. And Lord Shiva is actually an expansion of Krishna. Hmm? 
So they think like this. When they see some demon like that, they think, hmm, this is only possible huh? under the plan of the Lord. Hmm. So they give a, ble- a benediction that they know will bring this demon into direct contact with the Lord. Just like Lord Brahma's benediction to Hirani Kashipu, it was such that no one else but the Lord himself could kill this demon. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, who else could defend Prahlad? Only the Lord himself. So, because he is Bhaktavatsala, his devotees are so dear to him, he personally appeared. Mm. Any other question? Okay. Vishnu Badaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Shami Niti Namine Namao Vishnu Badaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Shami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Brajadine Nirvashesha Shunyavadi Varshacha Deshatadine Namaste Sarasati Deve Kodavani Vrajadine Nirvashesha Shunyavadi Varshacha Deshatadine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garada Shiva Shadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garada Shiva Shati Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garada Shiva Shati Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garada Shiva Sati Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hade Krishna Hade Krishna 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 Hade Hade Hode Rama, Hode Rama Rama Rama, Hode 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 Krishna, Hode Krishna Krishna Krishna, Hode 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 Rama, Hode Rama Rama Rama, Hode Hode 
होडे कृष्ण होडे कृष्ण 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 होडे होडे होडी राम होडे राम 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 हादे हादे होडे कृष्ण होडे कृष्ण 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 हादे हादे होडे राम होडे राम 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 हादे हादे हरे कृष्ण हादे कृष्ण 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 हादे हादे हरे राम हादे राम 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 हादे हादे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हादे हादे होरे राम होडे राम 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 हादे हादे होरे कृष्ण होडे कृष्ण 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 हादे हादे होरे राम होडे राम 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 हादे हादे कृष्ण हो रे कृष्ण 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 हो दे हो दे हरि राम हरि राम 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 आदे हादे हो रे कृष्ण हो रे कृष्ण 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 हो दे हो दे हरि राम हरि राम 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 आदे हादे Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Ram Hari Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram राम राम हादे हादे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हादे हादे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हादे हादे हरे राम हादे राम 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 हादे हादे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णो कृष्णा कृष्णा हादे हादे हरे राम हादे राम 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 हादे हादे जय प्रभु पादा जय प्रभु पादा प्रभु पादा जय प्रभु पादा नित्य गोरा हरिबा 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 गोरा हरिबा Shri La Prabhupada Ki Jai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Jai